I go there, you know, the messages I preach are simple and Bible-based, uh, but I know that I'm getting through because I can see people that have a walk with God that, you know, they've had it for 40 years, and they've suffered for the cause of Christ. These, these are people that, you know, I'm, I'm humbled to be in their presence because I have preached and, and I've written books and I've done all this thing, but honestly, I've never taken a punch to the face for the cause of Christ. I've never been on an electric chair for Christ. I never had my family taken away from me because I was a Christian. And so when I'm in the presence of people like that, that have actually counted the cost and, and said it was worth it and followed through and remained faithful to Jesus in the face of persecution, I'm humbled. You know, I go there and they go, preach. I'm all, look, I came to learn from you. I came so we could fellowship together and just pray together and learn from the Word together. I, I don't feel that, you know, I'm strong enough to preach to you because you've gone through these things. And so to me, it's a humbling thing. The biggest difference to me is that this is a church that has already been tested. It's already been purged. And uh, those that thought following Christ was equal to a walk in the park kind of went away a long time ago. Wow. And since you bring that up, they were persecuted. They lived the underground church. And here in America, do you see that coming, the underground church? Oh, I, I believe there will be a great separation. And uh, if history is any indicator, it happened in our country. Uh, those that gave in to the request of the government uh, that remained, I guess you call it, the above-ground church, began to persecute the underground church. I, I think right now we're being legislated into silence. You can't speak against sin anymore. You can't speak against abomination anymore. You can't talk to people about repentance because it offends their sensibilities. So I think there must be a break where people will decide to either follow God or obey government. And when that break comes, it, it will be like in Romania. You know, those that went underground saw the presence of God. They saw miracles. They had revelations. And those that didn't were like uh, Joel Osteen's church, basically. Exactly. I'm sorry. That was a dig. I, I didn't mean it, but there was no better comparison. Uh, you know, and, and that's what happened. The people that went underground that would not compromise the truth, that would not compromise the Bible, saw the presence and the power of God. And those that compromised hated them for it. You know, uh, I met an old preacher that got beaten and tortured in ways that you can't even imagine. I mean, my grandpa wasn't the only one that went through this kind of stuff. And I talked to him. I, I've been putting together a book about testimonies of suffering. And he said to me, the worst beating that I ever got was from a man I used to call my brother. Uh, the man had become a Secret Service uh, agent, and he was still going to the state church. But the hatred that he felt towards this, and, and if you saw this man, it just, Wiry, thin, really fragile. You know, he says, the worst beating I ever got was from a man I used to call my brother. And, and that really sunk in. You know, there will be Christians persecuting Christians because they will see those that stand on the truth of God's word, that cling to the righteousness of Christ as against progress. You know, you're embarrassing the rest of us. Stop talking about Jesus. Stop talking about sin. Stop talking about righteousness. Just embrace everybody. Be tolerant. Shut up. You know, this is already happening. It's already happening in this country. Worse will come. I think a wave of persecution is coming to America. Thus fulfilling what Jesus said, they will betray one another and turn you in and deliver you up, right? Oh, definitely. Because, look, at a certain level, uh, whether subconscious or not, they will realize that they have betrayed Christ. And so when, when these people go along just to get along, when they become silent about the truth because they don't want any opposition. In the depths of their heart, they will realize they betrayed Christ. And so their anger needs to go somewhere because we're not willing to own up to anything in this country because we're not willing to be accountable for anything. This is not a generation of accountability. Their anger needs to be focused outward. And the, and the people their anger will be focused on are those that remain faithful. So that raises another situation that's going to be very interesting. The people of God, the true remnant, the ones that are underground, quote-unquote, will need to learn discernment because there's going to be a lot of betrayers out there. And a lot of people in church today could be sitting next to someone that will, would gladly turn them in, thinking they're doing a good thing. And I think there will be certain cases where God will allow it. Because the Bible says you, you will stand before judges and you will stand before powerful men. Do not worry about what you will speak because I will put the words in your mouth. Look, you know, persecution is not something that we should fear. Because persecution strengthens us. I've met people that long to see the days of persecution again because they saw the presence of God in such a way during those times that they miss it. Look, God is still God. 
he will be with his children. He will strengthen his children. Do, do you think that people that went to their death being eaten by lions or, you know, being dipped in top, being lit like torches in the night, do you think that God wasn't with them? The presence of God was so powerful in them that they saw the lions coming and they smiled. You know, this is the amazing thing. Be a living testimony. You know, I don't want to suffer, but God's will be done because I know that he will strengthen me in my suffering. I know that whatever I have to go through, he will be there and that my life will be a testimony towards his greatness and towards his mercy and towards his love. I appreciate you saying that, Brother Michael, because I get a lot of emails from people that tell me, I hope that I can stand up for God and I hope that I won't bend and flinch and give in. But they're worried and they're concerned, but they have the true heart that wants to do it. So I'm glad that you're saying that. And Can you address those people? Because, you know, we hear His grace will be sufficient, but still people worry about it. I, I understand, and uh, I, I would be lying if I said that I didn't think about it from time to time. But again, it, it comes back to the issue. Is Jesus preeminent in my heart? And if Jesus is preeminent in your heart, I, you know, uh, now I'm speaking to those that you mentioned, don't fear the future. If Jesus is preeminent in your heart, then when the time comes, he will infuse you with strength, he will infuse you with grace, and you will suffer for the cause of Christ and do so with joy. Look, of all the apostles of Christ, I think Paul uh, was beaten and scourged and stoned and left for dead more than any other, shipwrecked, you name it, he went through it. Yet he said something so profound. He said, I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. Look, everything that we go through in this life is temporary. It is temporal. The glory that will be revealed in us is eternal. And that, that, that is what gives me strength. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. Well, and with that, uh, we're about out of time. But I want to say that I really, really appreciate your words of challenge and your words of encouragement. And also want to ask you, can we have you back sometime in the future? Uh, that would be fine. Uh, I, it was great. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm always here uh, except starting Sunday. Um, I'm going to Romania for two months. I'll be back uh, September 5th. So any time after that, you know how to contact me, and I'd be glad to be on again. Um, can you give some closing words to everyone? Any last things you want to say to all the listeners out there? The, the only thing that I can say that, that will not sound hollow, uh, given everything that we've talked about, is a scripture from Isaiah 43. Uh, it's one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, 43, 2, and 3. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire... You shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And I think that says it all. Amen, Brother Michael. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you for being an encouragement. And I really appreciate you, brother. God bless you. All right. God bless you. Well, brethren, that was Michael Boldea, and his website is handofhelp.com. And I really appreciate this young man. And you know, at his young age, he has blazed the trail of many people twice his age. And you know, folks, I was really surprised that as we were talking, Michael mentioned many of the same things that I regularly talk about. He talked about repentance, the false self-esteem gospel, and he also mentioned that he believes that something very, very big is coming to America. He also believes that a war is going to be coming to this nation. And he also talked about the swine flu. So... You know, the thing that I want to make mention of right now is I have not told Michael Boldea what I talk about here on Watchman's Cry. He's a very busy man, and he doesn't come to my website and read my articles or listen to my audios. Those of you that are regular listeners know that the fourfold judgment is a thing that I have been warning about for a while now. The fourfold judgment, brethren, that is what is coming. That is what we are facing, and that's what we are going to have to reckon with. The fourfold, which includes famine upon the land. It also includes a war, the judgment of the sword. Also, it includes plague, pestilence, and evil wild beasts. And folks, you know why our message is the same, Brother Michael's and mine? It's because the Holy Ghost is real, and the words that he places in his messengers are the same words. Why? 
to warn you so that you are prepared and so that you are ready. And I know that many of you are getting ready. And brethren, I want to just encourage you and admonish you to continue what you're doing. Don't give up. I know that many of you have family members that don't see things the same way you do. They have not been awakened like God has awakened you. But don't give up on those family members, brethren. Keep praying for them, keep encouraging them, and keep challenging them. It will only be a matter of time when the foretold events that we've been talking about and warning about finally reach the stage. And finally, when they arrive over your city, if they have not already, your family members and friends hopefully will come to you and ask you to fill them in on what's going on because you're the one that they're going to come to. So don't give up, brethren. Uh, I want to give a quick update on our move. Those of you that did not hear the announcement, Watchman's Cry Ministries and the family of Nathan Liao, which includes me and my wife and my children, is going to be leaving Colorado in the next few weeks, and we're relocating to the state of Idaho. So keep us in your prayers, brethren. The website is Watchman's Cry. So God bless you, and we'll see you next time.